Hey y'all, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. Thank God it is Friday. All praise be to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I've been working on one more. Tell me what you guys think. I think I'm getting pretty close to it. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, I've been working on that when I kept uh, getting it mixed up different letters, uh, but I think I'm getting pretty close. I've been listening to uh, one of the, uh, not translators, but um, someone on YouTube that teaches you how to speak Arabic correctly. So um, I was excited when I kind of got the basics of it down. I was like, finally. Uh, but yeah, it feels good. So, uh, but yeah, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to go, uh, with the prophets and messengers of Allah series again today. We're going to continue on and we are on episode 33, the story of Sabbath breakers, Kali Mullah part eight. Um, this is a bit of a short video. Um, I may just go directly into um, episode 34 after this. Um, I think it was only like 12 or 15 minutes long also, so I'm just going to run them back to back. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it, man. We instructed them from the commandments that on the Sabbath, they were not allowed to work at all. You know the people who broke that covenant regarding the Sabbath and they hatched their own plan thinking they would make a fool of us. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The story of the Sabbath breakers is about a group of people from the Bani Israel who lived in a village by the sea and they used to get their livelihood from fishing. And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we instructed them from the commandments that on the Sabbath, they were not allowed to work at all. A Sabbath in Arabic is Sarray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them and commanded them to abstain away from working on Sarray. And when we say Sarray, Sarray begins from Friday night and it ends by Sarray night, which when the sun sets on Sarray. That's the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Bani Israel was commanded not to fish on the day of a Sabbath, on the Sabbath. But because these people had got used to doing wrong, Allah sent upon them a fitna. Fitna means, what does a fitna mean? A, a test, a trial. So what was this fitna? These people on the Sabbath, the fishermen, they used to notice the fish are all coming. And when it was the Sunday, the fish all went away. So Friday, no fish. Saturday, like the fish knew and you know what today we're not going to be fished so let's all go and tease these people every day there was no fish in the sea nothing but the one day they were not allowed to fish that's the sabbath what did they find the fish were jumping out of the water so many fish now you may think that if this happened to you you'd say this is a, a sign from allah let me make toba let me change so on saturday the fin you know, if, if you've been a fisherman, when you see the fin, you know that the top part of the fish, you go crazy. You go crazy. But this happens on Saturday. But one group amongst these people, what did they do? They decided to set their nets the night before. So the Sabbath begins like our day. So just before Maghrib, they put the nets out in the sea. Uh. So they didn't do any work on the Sabbath, right? And then just after Maghrib, the next day, they collected the nets full of fish. And they say, you see, we didn't work on the Sabbath. We did the work before and we did the work after. They wanted to find a loophole around the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did they do? They came on Friday evening and cast all their nets. Sunday morning, they picked them up with all the fish. Surely you can understand this is a sign and a test from Allah. Surely what is intended is that you should not cause any work to be done on the Sabbath. Even if you do it before and do it after, you're missing the point. You're still causing the fish to be caught. So there was a group amongst these people, they were giving da'wah. They went to these people, they said, listen, fear Allah, don't do this, stop this. You know, you're breaking the command of Allah. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were giving them da'wah. And there was another group of people. They weren't breaking the Sabbath. They weren't disobeying the commands of Allah. But they said to the people who were giving da'wah, why do you bother with these people whom Allah is about to destroy and send upon them a terrible punishment? So they knew that Allah was going to destroy these people. They knew it. But they said to the ones giving da'wah, why are you bothering? 
Why do you keep on advising them when you know Allah is going to punish them? When you know Allah is going to destroy them? Stop wasting your time. So the ones who were giving da'wah, they said something very important. They said, so that we will do our duty before our Lord. We are advising them so that we will have an excuse on the day of judgment that we did our job. And also, maybe they might listen. Maybe they might come back and be righteous people. So this verse tells us the importance of an Islamic principle, commanding what is good and forbidding what is evil. They didn't want to stand in front of Allah and Allah will ask them. So they knew that da'wah was an obligation. Now the people of that town saw this trick. Who are you trying to trick? Are you trying to trick Allah Azza wa Jal? Are you playing a game on Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala that you set up your net before Sarray enters and then you leave it until Sarray is over and then you go and take all the fish that's caught in that net and you say to yourself you didn't do anything on Sarray this is a trick this is a game so Allah Azza wa Jal let those who were disobeying him to continue disobeying him and this is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's way when someone disobeys Allah, Allah does not punish them then and there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets go of them and lets them and gives them the opportunity for them to repent to Him, for them to go back to Him. But a reach to that time and limit where Allah will just destroy them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as a punishment, we converted them into apes because they transgressed. Allahu Akbar. He actually transformed them into apes, chimpanzees. Okay, I just, <laughs> I gotta say, you know, and I know it's kind of a funny thing to say because we were talking about uh, events, you know, from a, a couple of thousand years ago or probably, you know, more than that. Um, but I've just like, I've like had it. I've had it up to here with uh, Bani Israel not obeying Allah ever, never listening to wisdom, always trying to find a workaround, always doubting. Like, it's just, it's frustrating to read, but, um, or to listen to this as well as reading the Quran, you know, but it's important to understand what happens uh, to those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I'm going to try to say that more so that I can um, get it into like my muscle brain memory, you know what I mean? Um, but it's an important lesson to learn that um, you will be punished, but also um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also very merciful. How many chances? Um, are we on now uh, since the, the very beginning when they saw the first miracle? I, I don't even know anymore. I think we're over 20 of significant events by this time frame uh, somewhere in that range. So it's just it's unbelievable. But uh, let me go back to the beginning of the eight part and let's start again. Allah will just destroy them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as a punishment, we converted them into apes because they transgressed. Allahu Akbar. He actually transformed them into apes, chimpanzees. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a lot of Muslims, unfortunately now, they assume that they can trick Allah. They can do all type of things that Allah doesn't know. Allah Azza wa Jal sent His wrath on them. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala sent His punishment and curse upon them. That Allah deformed them and turned them into apes and monkeys. And then three days after that, they were all destroyed. They did not have any progeny. They do not have any offsprings. They wanted to trick who? They wanted to trick Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, and it is a lesson for those who fear Allah. Don't you ever think you could trick Allah? Don't say what's haram, it's halal, but try and justify it another way. We have people these days, they want to justify everything. Justify smoking. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Justify taking riba as long as it's my first house. Justify drinking alcohol. It's not called alcohol, it's a different drink. Justify this and justify that. This is the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be taught. He wants to teach us then trick Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then play games with the deen of Allah. Allah I'm just going to interject here for a second and when when i know that mind game and i've tried to play it before um where it's almost you're trying to find a workaround uh, around a sin you know haram you're trying to find a workaround where maybe you're just teetering on the edge 
Um, but but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what you're doing. Um, it, so you look like a complete fool and, and me as well. Um, when I've had those type of thoughts, you know, we're humans, um, there's temptations, we get whispers, things happen, uh, but you have to ignore those. There and never under any circumstance can you can you ever fool um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, let's go. Do not trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then play games with the deen of Allah. Allah's deen is so straight. Allah's deen is so clear. Allah's deen is so evident. Al halal ubayyan wal haram ubayyan. Halal is clear, haram is clear. And in between them, there are matters which are doubtful. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, leave those doubtful matters. But if you look carefully in the Quran, brothers, we see three groups of people the Sabbath breakers, the ones giving dawah and the ones who are not breaking the Sabbath, but they were not giving dawah. But Allah only rescued one group of people. Allah mentions in the Quran the meaning of which is, we rescued those who forbade evil and we sent upon the wrongdoers a grievous punishment. And when they forgot that by which they had been reminded, we saved those who had forbidden evil. So Allah says, we saved the ones that advised the sinners. And we seize those who committed the sin with a wretched punishment because they were defiantly disobedient. So he said, Ibn Abbas who says, but Allah didn't even bother to mention those who didn't commit the sin, but refused to go and warn the sinners. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the commanding of what is good and the forbidding of what is evil is why our ummah is the best ummah. It is why Allah created us. It is a fundamental principle of our religion to preach what is good, to warn against what is bad. Our Prophet wasallam said in that famous hadith, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You are going to command what is right or you and you are going to forbid what is evil or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a punishment that encompasses everybody. In other words, once evil becomes rampant and nobody says anything, nobody wants to stop it, then when Allah's punishment comes, everybody is equally guilty. But if you spoke out, if you did something to try to stop it within your realm, then you will be excused on judgment day. That at least I did what I was supposed to do. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever amongst you sees an evil, let him correct it with his hand. If he's not able to do it with his tongue, if he's not able to do it, then at least with his heart and let him hate that evil. And that is the weakest level of Iman. Beloved brothers and sisters, Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing to that. So, um, like giving dawah, uh, warning people, trying to do your best. You know, we see um, popular YouTube figures like this, like um, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawah, um, the uh, what is uh, the Muslim Lantern, I believe, um, and there's others, uh, Sheikh Uthman and um, the Warner, that giant man, the Warner. Uh, and you can see they always come out professional. They're always um, the first one to be nice. And then you see what it takes when they have to interact with hostile people, but they're still doing their duty as Muslims and they still are engaging these people on the street and they're trying to tell them the truth, you know, and debate with them. And I would say that in every case that I've seen, it's the other person, not the Muslim who starts with the aggression and gets and gets absurd at times, you know. Um, so um, with that said, doing something that is hard is always going to give you a better reward as a, a general rule in life. And you see that exactly the same way giving Dawah. So I, um, <laughs> yeah, I think that I'm going to go into that a bit more as it pertains to, uh, pertains to a lot more things in a few videos from now. It's uh, something I've been um, thinking about and planning out. Um, and it is, I think it's really going to be beneficial for men and especially young men. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Let's finish this video and move into the next one. Hit that evil, and that is the weakest level of Iman. Beloved brothers and sisters, we were going through the life of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We have three beautiful stories that are mentioned in the Quran, incidents that occurred during the life of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We will start with the first one where the story of the cow and a full surah, the biggest surah in the Quran Kareem is named after the incident al-Baqarah the cow. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahu bihamdih subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. 
Nice. Allah says, and remember when the person was... Okay, uh, just so that um, everybody is aware of the video, it's this is episode 34, the one right after it. Um, and this is the story of Al-Baqarah, uh, Kalimullah, part nine. I have read this chapter, uh, this, the second chapter in the Quran. I have completed it, and I got about halfway through it again the other day. Um, and I will say that some of the verses in there... Um, when when you read them they just they hit you hard um i don't remember the verse exactly but it's basically about the wicked and um when um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he um cast the lightning down they move um when the, there's light with the lightning and then they stop whenever the lightning stops and there's no light <clears throat> and i know that that's uh, not exactly a recitation but it's it's one of those verses uh that i read over and over and it just it kept hitting me the image of that and all of the deep meanings behind that that extend out into um the current day as well as back then uh so i just it, it's really really good okay let's uh, start this one over allah says and remember when the person was murdered and you were debating and arguing as to who murdered that particular person. We instructed you to take a chunk of the meat from this cow and strike with it the dead man. And when he was struck, he came up alive after he had died. And he said the name of the person who murdered him and he died again. Allah says, Kadalika yuhyillah. This is how Allah gives life to the dead. Allah says, we've done it so many times in the past. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, are wandering in the desert for 40 years. They lost the way. I would like to share with you a story that a whole chapter in the Quran was named after it. Surah Al-Baqarah. An incident happened where one old man from Bani Israel was killed. This man was wealthy. They couldn't find out who killed the man. And they started quarreling to figure out who killed the man. Then they said, why should we quarrel when we have someone who speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa alayhi salam, let's go and ask him to find a solution for us. So they went to Musa alayhi salam. They said, look, we need to know the murderer of this person. It's causing a big problem. So Musa alayhi salam, after he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he came to Bani Israel and he said that Allah azza wa jal orders you to slaughter a cow. So what did Bani Israel respond back to Musa? We are asking you to solve the crime of somebody who was killed and you are telling us to kill a cow. What are you talking about? You making fun of us? What are you joking? Who are you speaking to? Musa alayhi salam, this is a prophet. He's gonna go and make fun of the deen. What did Musa alayhi salam say? Allah is commanding you. And Bani Israel have said that you making fun of us or are you joking? Look at the rude, rudeness of Bani Israel. What do you mean? Musa alayhi salam is joking with the name of Allah. This is not appropriate for a righteous man to do, let alone a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a prophet, to use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in jokes. So Musa was shocked. Me? Muck around? In religion of Islam? A'udhu Billah. I ask Allah Azza wa to protect me. And I ask Allah to protect me from being from the ignorant ones. Allah told them, sacrifice a cow. Now if you would follow that order, what does it mean? You go and sacrifice any cow. But Bani Israel asked too many questions. They told Musa alayhi salatu was salam, there are many cows out there. So many cows out there. We are confused. Make dua to Allah to inform us a little bit more detail. What type of a cow does he want? So Musa said, Allah said, slaughter a cow. So just go and slaughter any cow. Doesn't matter how big, how old, how fat, how skinny. Just slaughter any cow. He said, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. You know, you're talking about something serious. They have to be more serious. It, do, it doesn't make any sense that slaughter any cow. And Musa said, just go and slaughter any cow. There's no need for you to make a hard on yourself. So they said, no, 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 it doesn't make sense to us. So Musa alayhi salam went to Allah and he said, oh Allah, what kind of a cow is it? So they became hard and Allah became harder on them. They became strict and Allah azza wa jal made it strict on them. So Allah azza wa said, Verily it is a cow, neither too old nor too young, but it is between the two conditions. So do what you are commanded. Now they seen the cows 
they had a category of cows so the older were removed from their minds and the young were also removed and they had this middle category of cows they went back to Musa alayhi salam ya Musa the middle category of cows are too many so tell us what's the color of this cow make dua to Allah let him tell us what's the color of the cow Musa said any color just go and slaughter it they said no that's not enough ask the Lord to tell us what color is it so they became hard again so Allah Azza wa became more hard on them so Musa alayhi salam made dua again and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you want to know the color it is a rich yellow color that attracts the attention of the people and is cool to the eye it makes the people who look at it happy so now they are even forced to go into a smaller choice now the choice is becoming narrow and narrow the pool of choosing is smaller they went there looked around for the cows and then they came back they said call upon your lord for us to make plain to us what it is and then they said verily to us all cows are alike and inshallah we will find the right one what happened allah made it very difficult for them allah says it must be a cow that was neither prepared to till the land nor prepared to be used for irrigation it must be perfect without a spot on it no mark nothing they told Musa alayhi salam now you've come with something that is understandable now you've brought something understandable so these are additional descriptions which are narrowing their choice they went around and they found only one cow that fulfills these conditions only one and it is said that this cow was owned by an orphan what had happened and whose cow was this there was a man it is reported who passed away and he left behind a widow and an orphan one child and he had made a dua prior to passing away ya allah i am dying at this age i'm leaving my wife and child ya allah i leave them in your care you look after them what did he have he only had one calf a little calf so he instructed his wife before he passed away take this calf and release it into the forest because i don't trust these people Allah had protected the calf that it was grazing on its own and anyone went near it, it would make sure that it went away. It didn't allow anyone to touch it. No one. Until one day when the boy grew a little bit older, the mother said, look, your dad has left a cow and it's in the forest somewhere. Go and look for it. How am I going to look for it? Anyway, as he went, there was only one cow that came to him. And when it came to him, at that time, people were looking for exactly the same cow. So they went to him and they told the young man, we want to buy this cow. It fitted everything that Musa alayhi salam was told. So he said, look, I can't sell it. I need to speak to my mother. He went to the mother. They were talking about a price and they were speaking. And then the mother said, look, how can you sell it? We don't want to sell it at all. Somehow the orphan knew that Bani Israel want this cow badly. So he made business out of it. He knew that there is no cow that has this qualities except this one. And not only triple the price, he said, if you want this cow, you have to pay me its weight in gold. You have to pay me its weight in gold. He knows how to make money out of a cow. And Bani Israel were forced to pay its weight in gold because that was the only cow that fulfills the conditions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when they saw this cow, they said, now you have brought us with the truth. They told Musa, now you have brought us with the truth. As if he was joking or lying to them before. It shows how rude they were with their Nabi. Yeah, to put that in perspective, uh, the cow, its weight in gold. Um, you know, Google how much an ounce of gold is and then a cow of that size. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how many hundreds of pounds, perhaps a bit over a thousand pounds. You know, so that's uh, that cow is worth hundreds of millions, if not in the billions of dollars in today's world, I would think. Okay, let's go brought us with the truth they told Musa now you have brought us with the truth as if he was joking or lying to them before it shows how rude they were with their Nabi and we need to know something they did not have to go around hunting when Allah told him cut the cow had they caught the next cow and slaughtered it it would have still served the same purpose but they wanted to make life difficult Allah made it more difficult upon them and then they bought that cow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says even after they did buy that cow and slaughter it, they didn't, they weren't even convinced. We're doing it just for the sake of it. Not doing it because this is an order from Allah Azza wa Jal. Though they were near not to do it, they barely did it. 
Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them to slaughter a cow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to perform an ayah, a miracle in front of their eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Take a piece of that cow which is dead and strike the dead man with it. He gonna have life. So the dead man who was killed, when they touched him with the dead flesh of the cow, the man stood up alive and he started to speak and he said, My nephew is the one who killed me because he killed him for the inheritance. My nephew is the one who killed me. And then he died again. Allah says, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَ This is how Allah gives life to the dead. Allah says, we've done it so many times in the past. Bani Israel, with its numbers and its people, they gathered around in that scene. And they saw the whole scene. Something that mankind's mind can't handle. The dead came back alive. And he spoke and he said, this person killed me and he went back dead. Ya ikhwan, did that soften the hearts of Bani Israel? Okay, so if any of you um, know how many miracles um, since the uh, beginning of the uh, story of uh, Prophet uh, Musa, peace be upon him, how many miracles have we seen since then? Has Bani Israel seen how many thousands and thousands of witnesses and we're still seeing the same problem? Life, and he spoke and he said this person killed me and he went back dead Ya ikhwan did that soften the hearts of Bani Israel did that make the people of Bani Israel say to Musa or oh Musa we surrender to your Lord we surrender to your orders we follow you and we're willing to do anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then after that your hearts were hardened and they are hard as rocks or even harder. Subhanallah, a heart can be harder than rocks. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And indeed, there are stones out of which rivers gush forth. And there are stones where water flows from them. And there are stones that fall down for fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your hearts are even worse than stones. This lesson of Al-Baqarah, a few comments on it. The Muslim Ummah right now, they are not fulfilling a lot of commands. They want to understand why. Who said you have to understand all the wisdom behind all the commands? Remember, when you believed in Allah, you believed in one of his names, which is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you something in the Quran, and then you question it, then you know what? You're questioning that name. You should trust the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this needs to be understood in the right way. It does not mean that you worship Allah on ignorance. If you don't know something, then you need to ask. The cure of ignorance is asking. Whenever there is a straightforward command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa you have to do your very best to fulfill that command. And remember, we hear and we obey is the practical implementation of La ilaha illallah. We will move on to an interesting story, an amazing story that occurred with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And this is the story of Musa alayhi salam and Al Khidr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammadin subhanallahi bihamdih. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, I, I was thinking, man, if it's another like 10 minute, one, 15 minute one, I'm just going to go straight into it. But uh, yeah, it's almost 24 minutes. I just, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that was really good. And I, and I know I've said it probably five times now. Um, there's people in this world that will never listen. They will always um, question, but not in. They don't want to question because they necessarily want the real answer. They want the answer that their heart wants, not what the real answer is. Does that make sense? Um, they just. I don't know. I don't think I need to speak on that anymore. I think we all know. <laughs> Uh, I, I should be back tomorrow. Um, the next video that we're going to do, it will be one of the lectures from uh, Muhammad Hoblos. And I'm going to look around. I want, really would like to do one that's over an hour. Um, I like those. I feel like we can have a bit of a better conversation. And I think that 
all of us can get more out of it, especially when it's uh, more so in that format where he's mixing in um, uh, Islam with uh, real life situations um, to make it easier to understand, especially for men and young men. Um, so yeah, I, I'm ready to get yelled at. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's good for all of us to uh, to hear that from time to time, especially for men. So I'm, I am looking forward to that. I know some of you had requested that we uh, do Muhammad Hoblos again, and we absolutely will. I love the last one that we did. I know that was over a year ago. Uh, but that was one of my favorite videos and um, it just brought up so many things from my own life, you know, that just kept popping into my head and I felt that it was uh, very beneficial to me. And I, I think a lot of you guys in the comments really liked that video as well and the things that Muhammad Hoblos was saying was helpful to you as well. So um, yeah, it's getting a little bit late. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow night by 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time, I will be back on here. So uh, we'll see. Uh, thanks for checking in, guys. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.